Welcome back to Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. So, I didn't do really much off screen. I did some of the side missions and quest missions here, the quest counter. Only did a little few, I didn't do too many. Um, I'm actually gonna start with doing stories first, and then we'll do the main quest, which is help Zop Zoppa's underlings. But yeah, we have a lot of stories I have yet to do. Fate episodes. But yeah, I did a few of these. I got a few more S pluses. Not too many. Like I said, I didn't really do much. Alright. All right, let's do a Fate episode. Alright, so you are Fish episode 4. So I can try this one. I can also... I can't do any more with you, actually. Never mind. I have one for you, but I barely control you. She doesn't have any more. Yugen has more. Then these two have more. Ooh, I might be able to do that. I'll do his first. Yugen and Rackham shoot the breeze about various urban legends attributed to Gandazagaza. They find the stories hard to believe, yet recall an incident where they witnessed the dwarf pulverize a meteor in the dust with his bare hands. Perhaps there is some truth to the legends after all. Sierra gave us the news. A lone brawler managed to stop a force of hundreds atop Mount Najalith, all while quelling a raging blizzard with his bare hands? I'm not a betting man. Well, I'm not a drinking man. But, well, I'm not a man who bets when he drinks. But I put good money on our brawler being Gondagoza. Gondagoza. All right, that's it. It hadn't been that long since we sailed the Zega Grande, so the old badger must have been working overtime for word to spread so quick. I asked Sierra to spill the details. The force he scattered was a group of soldiers, remnants of the Church of Avia, and word was they were specialists in guerrilla warfare. Sure as hell, they were a fierce troop. How does an unarmed martial artist take them all out? Not that I could ask the master, because you know what he'd say. <laughs> but hey, who needs words when you got those defined shoulder blades doing the talking? Guess it was just one more legend for the books. Man, that man is amazing. The way I had biceps. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, damn. All right, so much for that. All right, I'm going to try this one, this one, and this one. They're going to go terribly, mostly because I haven't really played with the gun users. And this one owned me a bit, but I got a new weapon with him, so we'll see what happens. You must play as Ward. Wow, I'm shocked. AKA the Captain. We don't need this. All right, let's do this. There we go. Let's do it to it. The supply should be this way. Let's move. Uh oh, our potion stock's running low. We'll be okay against a few goblins, right? Hopefully. Just don't overdo it. Ooh. Sure hope Vern's okay. He was really down, wasn't he? Poor Vern. Get out of our way! We're in a hurry here! Armor break! Come if you dare! You can't tell me! Right hell off! Hot enough for ya! Man, the music in this game is quite good. Damn, like, I'm, for more. I like miss fantasy, like, RPG games that actually there, use instruments. No yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, I have no bridge. We have to do this. There's a lot of fantasy games nowadays. They kind of use, you know, computers and all that, but you can... Oh, they use flutes and everything, okay? really brings it to, like, a classic, like, fantasy-type RPG, which is really nice. I like classic, like, flute music and stuff in an RPG, okay? Which is why I'm a big fan of, like, Crystal Chronicles, Final Fantasy and all that. Thank you. you saved Temtil's future. Heads up. Goblin reinforcements. All right. Yeah. Just don't quit. Yeah! 
Did you miss me? Took me forever to catch up. Burn. Burn. Was that an explosive? When did you get bombs? Here come uh. more of those stinking gobbles. What? Can you take them? Sure can. Bring them ready. Been saving this one. No, no. Okay, never mind. They took care of them. I might be slightly overloaded. Those goblins managed to steal any more of the supplies than the relief efforts good has done. No kidding. They've already hauled half our grain to higher ground. Higher ground? Sounds like a job for a cool dragon. That's a great idea, Vern. Put your wings to use. Are you sure you can manage? What if the goblins fought you? He's a king. I'll be back in 30 seconds or your money back. Oh. I found some of the stolen supplies. They're safe and down. Oh, there they are. it i was close to doing it the first time <laughs> well, that sucks i could did this a while back the enemy have started their retreat i think the worst has passed thanks to you skyfarers tempil's finally gonna be rebuilt we owe you everything Vern was the real mvp oh shucks i bet you say that to all your lifelong pals <laughs> skyfarers never fail Okay. Yeah, when you're level almost 30, that's easy to do. After we'd secured the supplies, Vern talked about how he didn't think he was good enough for the crew. Obviously, he was the only one that felt that way. I'd always appreciated his support. During fights, he was a supply runner, lookout, and cheerleader. And both on and off the battlefield, he was my courage. But even the best people, and dragons, get discouraged sometimes. I really should have been more vocal about my appreciation. I made sure he knows now. We won the day because he came flying to the rescue. Just like I knew he would. <laughs> I'll always be there for you, pal. He was back to his old self basking in the praise of the crew. Which caused his ego to swell like a balloon, but hey, who doesn't need a little confidence boost after a dip? And Vern, let me just say it now. I value you. And all the hard work you do. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. <laughs> you gained a sigil slot. Oh, I unlocked another episode about him. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Ah, this one won't be able to do, so we'll do this one. Vern confesses he feels like a burden on the crew. War assur 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 assures that the little dragon that his stalwart support bolsters the crew's morale and encourages Vern to keep doing what he's doing. Thanks to the heartfelt pep talk from his best buddy, Vern's confidence comes roaring back. Sometime after our mission in Tempeel, we bumped into the old merchant in Folka. Well, look who the cat dragged in. Thanks for handling things in Tempeel. You all deserve the best. Tempeel had been roughed up by Furikin's rampage, and all of the locals were busy repairing the damage. The work we did that day had been crucial to those recovery efforts. 
Out of curiosity, my young lizard friend, were you much help to your crew? Uh-oh. He said the L word. I turned to Vern, ready for his usual furious tagline. Thanks, Pops. You really helped me see the light. Huh. This was new. The old man threw an apple to Vern, and they exchanged a nod. Then, without explaining this bizarre bond between them that just came out of the blue, he left. Um, does anyone else feel like the space-time continuum just broke? Eo was staring dumbfounded at the small dragon, who was already happily munching away on a tart Granny Smith. Had he... matured? Enough to ignore his most hated of hated insults? Seriously, this is just too much to believe! He called you a lizard and everything! Maybe the ship will be a little quieter from now on, huh? Hold it! I ain't no lizard! And don't you say that in front of the apple! What if it hears you? <laughs> Maybe he'd get there in another adventure or two. Okay. Still a lizard. Alright. Come. Oh dear, I have barely played you. Let me see. Let's do it. A heated argument between several people reaches Rackham's ears. A young engineer wants to save an airship called the Nautilus from being scrapped despite his friend's calls for him to let her go. Rackham is sympathetic to the engineer, but feels the ship is a lost cause. As Rackham turns to leave, the energy then the engineer mutters something that stops him in his tracks. You must play as Rackham. Understood. I mean, sure, the Nautilus may be old, but she's got plenty of potential. She could easily outpace any other cargo ship in the fleet. At least three times faster! Found the poor bastard blathering his woes at a tavern in Folka. The seat next to his happened to be conveniently open, so I took it. Without so much as asking my name, he launched into story after story. It was clear he still needed to vent. Apparently, he just recently started his career as an engineer. Planned on restoring the Nautilus. It would revitalize the local economy, help Folka this, assist Tim Peel that. He went on and on. But I knew he wasn't going to feel better until he confronted the actual issue at hand. Don't get me wrong, I think it's great you want to help your home like this, but... That's not the real reason you're upset, is it? That obvious, huh? I, uh... Made a promise to my friends. One day we'd fly our beloved Nautilus across the skies together. But the ship in question was long past its heyday and had deteriorated beyond the point of conventional repair. Time is a cruel but patient mistress, and among the original Nautilites, only Kent had yet to accept reality. After he finished his explanation, silence fell between us. Well, until another man frantically stumbled into the tavern. I'd seen him somewhere before. Oh yeah, one of the naysayers from earlier, the merchant. Somebody help! Anybody! Monsters are ransacking my precious cargo! I was torn. Do my civil duty as a Skyfarer and save the cargo, or help this ass determined to crush the dreams of my newfound friend? So, I asked Kent. What? Uh, of course you should help him! Not a moment's hesitation from the kid. I like that. This would have been the perfect moment to ensure the continued survival of the Nautilus, at least in the short term. But despite that, Kent didn't think twice about helping his fellow man. Hell yeah, Kent. I'll see what I can do. Damn. Can't we take some R&R &R instead? Oh, controlling Rackham. Yeah, I have yet to do that. Rackham is a man of the skies, tasked with helming the Grand Cipher. Its two guns allow him to cover allies both long and close range. Press X to fire once, hold or hold fire to fire three shot bursts. Y attack is chargeable, which increases with the range and its damage. 
skills and X. Attack, he filled the heat gauge. His heat gauge, uh, his Y attack charges the faster the heat gauge, the higher the heat gauge. Is. Okay. To the merchant. Our destination should be around here. I just hope there's anything left to say. Let's get moving. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see how he plays. Goblins. What the hell are they doing here? Hmm. It's always goblins. All right, let's go. Let's say we didn't warn you. Been saving this one. Okay. He actually plays pretty decently. Okay, and the Y is basically like a blunderbuss type thing. Okay. He's a, I have a feeling, an easier character to play. Also, I have slag shot, which I forgot. That, that does. Be the cargo we're looking for. Cargo safe and sound. Maybe. Looks like it's been rummaged through. Okay, where are they? I knew it. We've got goblins and vipers on our trail. It'll take more than that to do us. <laughs> Ooh, okay, yeah, no, that's a really good attack if you get off. Come on! Go time! Late to run away, bud. Got a bullet for ya! Oh, you're in for it! Don't let up! Trigger finger is itching! Okay, yeah, no, I actually quite like Rackham. He's a lot more mobile and should walk faster. finally decided to show up, huh? Well, you're going down like the rest of them. Been saving Oh yeah, I think I really like Rackham. <laughs> he plays you pretty decent. You screwed up big time today, because you chose to mess with the best crew to ever cross these skies. Ha! Another one bites the dust. Oh. oh, you're a lifesaver. How could I ever thank you? You want to thank someone? Thank him. I gestured toward Kent. The man's face filled with shame as the irony dawned on him. So it was you, huh? Hey, uh, hey, listen. I'm sorry about earlier. I could have heard you out. After the merchant left, I wanted to focus on the next goal at hand. Wait, 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 wait. Back the, the merchant's Nautilus's voice, sink. is that Namba? The voice actor for Namba in Like a Dragon? That sounds like Namba. So I proceeded to do some intelligent and, friend. dare I say, brilliant thinking on the topic when Kent asked what I was talking about. Whoops, must have been thinking out loud again. You just wait and see. Weep, sigil slot. I need to really start doing sigils more. All right. But yeah, that, the, the merchant's voice sounded like Namba from Like a Dragon and Infinite Wealth. Good day. Hey, Chiba. All right, and this will be your last one for now. So let's do it. 
Rackham rescues a merchant's cargo from monsters at the request of Kent the Engineer. The merchant thanks Rackham and apologizes to Kent for being so demissive of the Engineer's goal to restore the Nautilus. Rackham thinks to himself that it's time to put some wild wi some wind back in the Nautilus's sails. How many times do I gotta say it? Getting parts to fix the Nautilus out here in the boonies is next to impossible. I've never been good with women. My words never come out quite the way I mean for them to. I thought maybe Miss Mechanic would be on board, but... Ah, I probably shouldn't be doing this behind Kent's back anyway. I'm telling you, I've tried everything. Sure, I'd love to see her fly again, but it's time to... Get real. Right? Hey, come on. I was against the rules. How was I supposed to keep a stern attitude against that blubbering mess? When I finally got a word in edgewise, I let her know I already had the parts she needed. Picked them up here and there, across Fanta Grande and Nala Grande. Here, this what you need? I've got you a deal. Wait, how? Where in the skies did you find these? Caught up in her excitement, she leapt at me. Whoa, not so close, Missy. Of course, she paid me no regard. It was the parts she had her eyes on. Some modifications here and there I could... Yeah, can't believe it. The dream is alive. Yep, the dream was alive. She didn't have to say it. The look on her face was enough. All that hubbub from earlier was nowhere to be found. After forking over the payment, she happily took the spare parts off my hands. She also made sure to plant a big, fat kiss on my cheek before scurrying off. Jeez, at least warn a guy beforehand, right? Women, I swear. In any case, the winds were starting to blow back in their favor. You're a pretty good guy. Yeah. All right, we're done with you, and now you again. One day, while wandering the Folka, Yugen encounters a young man racked with guilt. His name is Karzeda, and he lost his childhood friend in the storm that hit Tempil before he could tell her his true feeling. All oh, right, she ran off and immediately got killed by the storm. And right, ooh, yeah, mm, I feel better for that guy. Garzeda stared at the sunbeams as they illuminated the cliffside. His eyes were watering, and not just from the sun's rays. When we were kids, we made a promise. Once I became a proper jeweler, I'd share my most treasured secret with her. Cowardly, yes, but that was the only way I could tell her how I felt. Ah, it all made sense now. His deepest, darkest regret was putting off telling her was in his heart for so long. We made that promise ages ago. I... I wouldn't have been surprised if she forgot all about it. Garzeda paused, as if remembering something. He lifted his gaze to the sky, then continued. Oh, right. I have to go back to the mines in Tempil. There are keepsakes of hers there. I don't think she can move on without them. I could tell how important this was to him, but when the people fled Tempil, a horde of monsters moved right on in. Actually, forget the fiends. Karzeda wasn't in shape to go anywhere right now. What do these keepsakes look like? I can head to the mines and track them down for you. Considering his condition, I wasn't about to give him room to argue. Besides, I know all about not being able to share the important stuff with a loved one while there's still time. There's so much I didn't get to tell my family. Even now, thinking of our old house makes my heart ache something fierce. That day, there was no one to greet me when I opened the door. Seeing the cold remains of my home tore open a void in my heart. But you know what? I managed to keep going because my friends were there for me. This time it was my turn to support someone who needed it. The keepsake should be somewhere around here. 
Might as well inspect the mine shafts as we go to. All right, we're right into it. Let's do this. Ooh. Oh, these caves are still. Um, they're not that stable. I forgot if you hold on the fire button. Now then. Wait for it. That didn't they act like they own the place. Oh, yeah. Sorry, but you're gonna have to move. Here it goes. Let's go. Well, well. Who invited you to the party? <laughs> Got a beat up. <laughs> All right. There we go. Yeah, no, these caves seem. Yeah, like I was about to say, these caves is counting on us to find those keys. Really Alright, I'm about to get attacked. There's a few barrels around here. Alright, give me a second. Alright, none of them are slimes. Wait, right, what's this? Watering can, a shovel? These are the keepsakes. Huh? Did you hear that? Oh, I was I, I just saw it. I didn't even Oh. Hey guys, behind you! You reap what you show! Look at the size of that one! Now then! Get out of there! Woo! We got the big one. I think we can rest easy. Great! What was this way? Place was crawling with oh, goblins. Dead. Good thing we came instead of Carzada. Yeah, no, this place is falling down. Like, geez. Uh oh. Did he often jump? Carzada said his friend loved flowers. Tempeel's soil was harsh and didn't lend itself to flora. But her dream was to grow a variety of flowers and let them bloom all over the land. So there's a reason why I'm wondering if this is a bad and, uh, thing that just happened, because I don't see the guy anywhere in here. Knowing how much her dream meant to her, Carzada wanted to bring her gardening tools back and place them in front of her grave. His hands were trembling okay, no, when we're I good. passed them over. Thank you. Thank you so much. He was so choked with emotion that each word sounded pained like thorns sticking in his throat. I kept my eyes on him. It felt like if I looked away for even a second, he'd fade into the great blue beyond. He was still grappling with his hurt. You wanted to say goodbye to her properly, right? Come on, I'll go with you. I slapped him on the shoulder, silently willing him to pull himself together. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Thank you. Carzada hugged the tools tightly against his chest, his teeth biting down hard on his lip. It broke my heart, seeing someone so young deal with such overwhelming tragedy. The least I could do was help him see this through. Ooh, feel bad for that guy. I think that's something we all something? fear. Oh, nope, not that. Oh, and he has no more. Okay, and time for the new guy. Foul smell fills the air as my dissolving limbs grow black. Protect the captain! Get him somewhere safe! No, leave me. Run. As long as you're alive. We can rebuild. We promised, didn't we? Our lives are in your hands. 
You're not allowed to make the sacrifice for me. Please, save yourselves. I'll never forget the memory of that day. My conceit put us in that mess, but I was the only one who made it. After all the good times we shared, after all the pain, they would have to live on in my memory. Once I could pick myself back up again, I began to temper my body. I swore I'd never let the same tragedy repeat itself. It wasn't long before this husk became resilient, augmented and conditioned to withstand even lightning. I no longer felt physical pain, or much of anything at all. It was preferable that way. I could be a shield to protect others, to protect them from the same tragedy that befell my crew. Having lost my place in the world, I found a home in the society and quickly became contractor to the seal weapon, Great Scythe Grinoth. My missions were simple, hunt primal beasts or exterminate the foe. I did my job so that I could keep people safe, to aid them in their time of need. But despite my best efforts, I still failed. I was powerless when Vern was kidnapped right in front of me. Worst of all, I could do nothing but watch as our hopeful new recruit was cut down. What good was I when I couldn't even protect a single one of my comrades? <sighs> Maybe the real mistake was believing I could do good in the first place. Hmm. He rescued. He was. Someone per. So you protecting Vern? Vesa Grande remade his body after. Oh yeah, Vesa Grande remade his body after losing the crew he commanded. As part of the society, he devotes his days to hunt primal beasts and enemy organizations. As a contractor with the seal weapon Grinoth, whenever he encounters something he can't protect, he ponders his meaning, his life's meaning. Hmm. Oh, who's she? I joined the society to protect others, which sounds noble on paper. But in reality, it was all for my own sake. I'm the reason that my old crew, my family, found an early grave. It was only right that I spend the rest of my meager life in atonement. At least... That's the excuse I told myself. In truth, another part of me was deluded into thinking I could free myself from the guilt, but only if I could change into another person. Turns out that being immune to physical torture does nothing to protect your heart from psychological torment. Speaking of mental suffering, not long after I joined the society, Ilsa assigned Zeta as my partner. The old me would have worked with her just fine, but too much had changed. Her blunt honesty rubbed me the wrong way. A man can only take so much random commentary before he goes insane. Even Ilsa called her pupper, which was kinder than what I had in mind back in those days. But it was an apt name, considering all of her barking. I didn't care about forging a real partnership with Zeta. Every time we had a mission together, I just wanted to finish it as fast as possible. But it backfired. Whenever I pushed her away, she pushed back ten times harder. She was determined to know me. I would have never admitted it out loud, but I was afraid. After all, the closer you are with someone, the harder it is to cope with their loss. Be able to. Right, I'll be able to do the fight. As the ground, they join society despite a healthy reason to live, desiring a healthy reason to live, protecting others. His superior introduces him to Zeta, who at first he finds disagreeable for speaking her mind bluntly, but finds she snaps him all the more when he's distant. He ponders how the how he ponders how best to handle this. 
That, that, that English, I swear. As for why I joined the captain's crew, well, I had my reasons. The captain's father was awaiting our crew in Estelucia, and that meant duking it out with primals and gathering sky map pieces along the way. The captain was strong and humble, had a knack for overcoming hardship. With leadership like that, I knew this crew could actually make it. That's not to say they were running a flawless operation. The way I saw it, they had two big problems. Vern and Lyria, the Red Dragon and the Girl in Blue. It's true they were core members of the crew, but they possessed powers which could represent grave consequences for the skies. Should one overflow with astral energy, or the other absorb enough primal power, they would be erased and herald the destruction of everything as we know it. Uh-oh. And right now she's absorbing a lot of primal energy. Meanwhile, I guess Vern needs astral energy. I haven't seen Vern really do anything other than help us, so... Curious. It was possible the captain could reach Estelucia without any sacrifices. But I wasn't the type to bet on fate. These kids needed a shield. This body of mine would protect them all, no matter what came to pass. At least, that's what I intended. During the fight against the Moon Dwellers, I lost myself to the Atomagod Grinoth's power and raised my scythe against the crew. As pathetic as it was, I became the very threat I swore to protect them from. That was why I prepared a way to stop my own heart. I wouldn't hurt my comrades again. If I couldn't protect anyone, then the least I could do was make sure I could do no more harm. What are you playing at, Vasaraga? Is this your penance after what happened to Lester? I was fine with sacrificing myself, as long as I could save someone else. A part of me even believed I deserved such a fate. I... I hate when you act alone. You could have come to me for help first, you know? We're partners, damn it! I couldn't feel pain, but... Somewhere inside, I felt like a wound had split me in two. It took me far too long to realize that it hurt my comrades to see me suffering. That I had chosen to run instead of face my fears. Did you hear me, you big lug? You're not gonna drop dead on us! Not on my watch! My partner's instincts were sharp enough to cut right through me. But it was her words, honest and blunt, which shattered the walls around my cowardly heart. The pain I should have dealt with a long time ago came spilling out, but this time, it was accompanied by a burning desire. <sighs> we're going to survive this, together. And that's the way it's been ever since. The Scythe took over and controlled him. Interesting. As the Grande joins the world's crew, knowing the harsh destiny that may await them, he vows to be their shield, but in a fight with the Moon Dwellers, he runs amok and bears fangs to an, a an ally. Tormented by his intolerable mistake, he looks to sacrifice himself, but his partner Zeta stops him. I, I shouldn't have, I'm not gonna read those. I don't think they're really needed, unless it's been a while. Early in the morning, before the crew was to head out for a request, I headed to the forest surrounding Folka to conduct a test on Grinoth. On the way, I was stopped by the sight of a young girl watering the vegetable garden by her home, the wet plants sparkling beneath the morning sun. But something felt off about the scene. In contrast to the bright garden, a dark, foul mist seemed to surround the girl. <laughs> Upon noticing me, she scrambled back into her house. The miasma clung to her as she fled. Sorry, lass. Shouldn't have snuck up on you like that. But that odd mist looked too real to be an illusion, and yet it didn't seem to be doing any harm. I decided to keep an eye out. After all, Folka was bustling with the influx of refugees from Tempil. 
and there was no telling what could happen in strange times such as these. Yeah, I have no idea what that could be. The woman who pines for death. Oh, it's a solo quest too. I can only play as you. Grinoth ripped through the silence of the forest. As I lowered the scythe, the quiet returned. It was a perfect place for tuning the weapon. At least, it would have been had I not sensed the presence of someone watching. Whoever it was, they had yet to strike, so I assumed they were no threat. Perhaps they were one of Folka's residents. I know you're there. State your business. Turning around, I saw the familiar face of the mist-shrouded girl. That black armor. Your big scythe. Her expression was blank, completely devoid of the cheer she had while watering her garden. Eventually, she spoke as tears welled in her eyes. I'm tired, Mr. Reaper. You can take me away now. The floodgates broke, a steady stream cascading down her cheeks. Mr. Reaper? What are you talking about? I only wanted to grow those little ones. But everything I do hurts them. They all rot away. All I do is cause pain. The girl hung her head and grew silent. It was obvious she had given up on life. It was a feeling I was all too familiar with. Once you've steeled yourself for death, you start thinking there's no other way out. But before I could console her, a monster appeared from the brush and leapt at the girl. I felled it in a single blow, but she gasped at the grisly sight. Fear appeared in her eyes. Good. If she could still fear death, then she wasn't too far gone. Sorry to disappoint, but I'm no Reaper. Most I can manage is to bring you safely home. You'd rather not be Monster Kibble, right? I... Need to gather your thoughts? I get it. Life rarely gives us obvious choices. Okay... Keep close. Maybe it was just a trick of the light, but I saw a bit of life return to her gaze. I took a step back toward the village ready to prove I was no reaper of the afterlife. Time to go home. Should be this way. <sighs> hmm. All right. Let's see how this goes. Oh, hello. That didn't feel like an earthquake to me. No, it didn't. Paths blocked by a boulder. Weird. It wasn't here before. Hmm. Let's look around. I'm gonna just. <sighs> All right, we're good. Oh yeah, this is gonna be a blast. Let's see if I can get the hang of this character. I haven't really played much of him. Someone's hungry. Stand back. I'll take care of it. Violent shadow! Come on. Try and stop me. So they were holding out. You should run. You're not worth risking your life for. I said I'd bring you home. Besides, I've faced worse than this before. Oh. 
Come if you dare. You can't stop fear. Come on. to get used to him because you have to do combos to raise his scythe rank. Yep, there we go. I raise it the two at the end. Good. You're not hurt. Now, what do we do about that boulder? I know another way back. It'll take longer, but... Fine by me. You take the lead. Yeah. I have to work on the uh, scythe work. like his abilities and all that he's a lot more slow of course than the melee guy i really like over here i feel eyes on us we're not alone oh we're not done yet eh okay <sighs> stout heart which makes Zombies. i got them <laughs> for life is mine <laughs> Also, you said zombies and skeletons. That's that. Ready to go? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't much get, get my combo in there, what so. Uh-oh, I know what that is. Try and stop me. Let's do this. You look exactly like a reaper. <laughs> I guess I'm no slouch with the sight. Battalion to fear! So, so, what's this whole obsession with death about? You don't have to answer, but just remember. Once you die, that's it. Ooh. Don't be so hasty to throw your life away. You can't stop me! Alright. I say, screw you. Step up! I'll cut you all down! Off. Weakly! Primal souls! Bloody temper good. this blade! Now fall! I'll observe for now. Damn it. Battalion. I'm trying too much at once. Are you sure you weren't the Reaper? Even if I was, it's not your time yet. Not today. Do I have to get used to him? I just can't get the combos down. But at least he could take damage and keep a combo going. Upon arriving at the girl's home, I was met by a shocking sight. The thriving garden I'd seen before was now gray and withered, its fruits and vegetables rotting away. How could all the life have been sucked from this place in such a short span of time? When I looked at the girl, she purposefully avoided my gaze. I decided against questioning her for the moment. Whatever's going on, I might be able to help. But we can talk about that later. 
You should rest. Okay. She took an unsteady step through the door of her home. As I watched her go, I felt eyes on the back of my head. But when I turned around, no one was to be found. Yeah, I doubt I imagined that. I spent a few moments scanning the perimeter, but soon found nothing of concern. I decided to call it a day. She being haunted? Hmm. Oh, I think that's everything. All right. Let me see. Who do I want in my party? I think I'm happy with what the party is right now. Strike that. Holy cow. I really leveled you up. Excellent choice. Excellent choice. What level are you? Rackham's 29? Jeez, what have I done? Could resist my help? And she's level 29 also? Really I is... compliment any bouquets. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's do some more quests, shall we? Hmm, I wonder if I should turn up the game audio a little bit. It looks a little quiet. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna turn it up. Excuse me. Oh, there's my mouse. At my fancy new second monitor. Just turn up a smidge. There we go. I'll just do 5.5. Also, is anyone on Discord? No, I'm shocked. Well, usually people message me by now. Alright. Can't lend a hand? Couldn't have come at a better time. We're assessing the castle's manpower. But it's not like the guards will volunteer to take a survey. I hate to use the term eavesdrop. But we're short on ears. If you see any castle guards, could you listen in? Out of sight and without getting caught, obviously. Okay. Remember, keep it hush hush. Is there anywhere we can hide? Incredible. You mean like right here? Oh, wait, or above. Yeah, yeah, that's probably better. So my granddad said the craziest thing the other day. Well, don't leave me hanging. That is Namba. You know, corridor of peace. You know why they really call it that? No, why? It's to honor an astral who once saved the sky dwellers. <laughs> That's a good one. What a joke. That's what I said. They were the ones who conquered us. A compassionate astral. <laughs> Can you imagine? Now that story I'd like to hear more about. Unfortunately, it has nothing to do with our task. That that voice actor is a hundred percent the guy who voices Namba in like a dragon. Hey, Ichiban. I cannot do the voice right now. Remember, keep it hush hush. Is there anywhere we can hide? Uh, oh, I mean I guess this here. Spot looks good for spying. Heard the news? Yeah. They raised the threat level for the Skydom. They keep sending reinforcements to Tempeel and other islands. Castle defenses will be stretched thin. Ah, this is it's important. taking a toll on the public safety team, too. The Church of Avia has been popping up everywhere. At least we're safe here. Don't have to worry about Seed Hollow getting invaded. Just hope I don't get shipped out. Mobilizing soldiers out of Seed Hollow is sapping the castle's defenses. People might get edgy if this leaks. Yeah, on top of that, that leaves the place wide open to be invaded. Uh. Remember, keep it hush hush. Is there anywhere we can hide? I'm guessing. You think we yeah. can hide here? Was he talking to himself? I know what I saw. That Harvin was wearing white robes. Match what was described in the intel report to a T. They say that uniform stole out to one of the deadliest groups in Avia. Obviously, the Silver Wolf Corps is also nothing to sneeze at. But this group uses strange techniques. Uh, I should have arrested that Harvin. What if they've already infiltrated the city? It helps not to talk to yourself. Avia may have already infiltrated Seed Hollow? That's bad news. But good to know. I think we've heard enough. Let's go report this in. 
I hate to say it, um, that dude should not have his job if he talks to himself out loud about things he shouldn't be talking about. Alright, Max Dose Tune, how'd it go? Uh, a little this, a little that. I see. I guess we'd better offer some resources to bolster the castle's defenses. By the way, didn't you say something about needing to see the boss? Yes. He should be in by now. Why don't you head for the bar? Oi, capiche? This Zosma guy sure likes to dip his talons in everything, huh? Yes. Thanks to him and his informants, the city's managed to stay relatively peaceful. But I'm going to do him one better. And protect every single dweller in these skies. Really? Are you sure you're not biting off more than you can chew? Oh, was that too much? Anyway, time to hit the bar. Mm-hmm. Sure, Roland. It's finally time to meet the legend himself. From what I've seen with his underlings, he runs a tight ship. I got a feeling it's gonna be a short fat man. Okay. Danny DeVito. <laughs> of course I joke. Also, they say the boss could be a she. Unless they refer to him as a he. All I kept hearing was boss. Oh. Oh. Everyone, meet Zafba. Hmm. Oh, it's a he. Oh, that's a big dude. Oh, he looks cool. Join my team. I want you. You got some good shades. And a decent jacket. Hmm. That's some jam. Yeah, I was hoping you could help. Let's talk business. You didn't let me finish. We aren't a charity. Selling info is how we don't starve. And the juicier the intel, the tastier our meals. You want a seat at the table? You gotta bring the bread. Know what I'm saying? Loud and clear. And you folks don't strike me as the type that can afford our prices. I'll say. Those hefty ship repair bills add up pretty darn fast. How about a proposal? You scratch my back, and I'll scratch yours. We really don't have time for this. Don't pass on a deal till you've heard every last detail. We've already looked into the mind sealer around your friend's neck. A catalyst stone that'll cancel the magic sleeps in some ruins on Dolly Island. Okay. Are you absolutely certain? So there's a way to get off Let me and guess. stop it. You're giving us the scoop because you want something in return. From those ruins. <laughs> Man knows how to cut to the chase. All you resourceful folks have to do is break the seal on those ruins. It just so happens there's hidden treasure in there we'd yep, love to I get our so. hands on. That's easy enough. And those are the conditions. Not a bad deal, if you ask me. Nope, I accept yep. your terms. We both get what we want. Seems fair enough. At this point, I think any lead is worth investigating. The choice is yours, Captain. I'll be waiting at the port. Come see me when you've got your answer. Mr. Shades back there was no ordinary dude. Amazing. Yes. Oh. Delightful. Ah. Oh, wait, it's the secret cocktail recipe. I needed this for a side quest. Give me a second. Oh, pin and pin. I gotta pin those. Mm. We're going to the journal. I'm gonna read this in my archive. If it's available. Oh, there it is. All right, rookie, let's see if you've got the chops to be a dark slinger. I wrote down everything you need for this cocktail, so it's possible to screw up. Yeah, I call it Midnight Stardust. 
Chill a mixing glass with ice, then combine the right ratio of gin, dry vermouth, and blueberry syrup, like I showed you before, and stir well. Pour it slowly into an ice-cold cocktail glass and garnish with an olive and cherry for the perfect presentation. That's all there is to it. This is totally my own original creation. Do not steal! This memo is for your eyes only, and I better not see it out in the wild. Once you memorize the recipe, burn it. Hmm. You know, I'm not much of an alcoholic drinker, but maybe I'll try that. Mr. Shade back there was no ordinary dude. I think you painted a different picture of the guy, Roland. <laughs> uh, well, he's very passionate about his work, yes. We didn't come here to dig up treasure for someone else. I know it's not the most direct way to get to Lyria, but it's better than nothing. Why did it have to be Dolly Island, though? Not to mention breaking the seal on the ruins. But if we don't take that risk... I suppose Zothba knows what he's doing. What are you mumbling about? Come on! He said he's waiting at the fort! What's waiting for us in the ruins, Roland? Roland? What's waiting for us in the ruins, Roland? Was something sealed in the ruins we need to know about? Alright. Easier than eating apples! Rolling. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh yeah, speaking of which, I should probably Alright. I have crit hit for you. I'm happy with that. For me, I'm gonna put attack power in Rupee Tycoon. I like Rupee Tycoon. Uh I don't really need to increase my health. Oh god, I have a lot of these. Uh you have attack power one. I want a let's break assassin. Ooh, no, 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 oh, that'd be, uh, okay, immediately know who I'm putting that on, Rupee Tycoon, okay, I want you to have, I'm gonna give you extra health for now, you, since you're the healer, for now, I'll give you low profile. I'll give you the guy. I give them the rest later. I only got the one for him, which is a shame, but ah, oh, whatever. And give him crit, of course. Then again, I can also put a few others on right now, but no. oh, I fear good tidings. wait, what? 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 Where are the tidings? I wanted to thank you for your hard work. Something about finding hot gossip and shady cats? Ah, uh, uh. sure is something else. <laughs> Enjoy your gift. Oh wait, what? Oh, I get a new crewmate. Never hurts to have some backup, right? Ooh, okay. Now who did I say I was gonna Who do I want? You seem cool, Charlotte Charlotte Charlotta? Charlotta? And you got fairy. Nemo Nara Narmaya Nar Jeez, I cannot say some names. Lancelot! Oh look, I can say that. Vane. Vice Captain. Okay. Percival. Siegfried. Caglistro. Caligistro. Hmm. Oh wait, Zeta! She's the girl! For him! Ha ha ha, so she could join your crew. Ah, it didn't hit me until now. You know what? I'm thinking of the old fisherman. I love how I'm going for all the harder ones first. I can sense you want to save a few cents. <laughs> uh, huh. No, yeah, we're gonna go with you. I know nothing about you. Get! He has a mustache and a beard. He has my vote. Heard you needed my blade. Yadarha, Yar, Yodarha, Yodarha. Yeah, sure. I'll some. I'll practice with him. Better chop the waters, folks. All right. Yadarha was once a renowned swordsman with many disciples. He handles two swords at will with blinding speed. 
making him adept at high-speed combos and counters. Press Y after an X combo for a fearsome finisher that can be chained into another combo. The chained combos will get shorter, meaning there's more chances to execute finishers. Yodhara, Yodhara gains a triple shroud mark whenever he completes a combo. Triple shroud marks enhance the next skill used and are automatically consumed upon activation. All right. Alright, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. Where you looking? It's curtain for ya! And he's big! Oh, you can't hit me! Alright, I just smell you later wide open! Reel him in! No running for me! Okay. Oh, I like him. He is just getting their attack get out. And then on top of that, sure you can use the Y. Oh man. The food in the market looks so good. Too bad it'll have to wait for another day. Yeah. Who knows when we'll find the time to kick back and relax. I'm sure Lyria will fall in love with this beautiful city. It's gonna be great showing her around. All right, give me a second. Since we got a new party member, I might as well take myself out for him. Huh? My turn? Now, you're... F oh, God. I'm so short now. Oh, my Lala fell from FF14. Guy's fast, though. All right. Uh, I need to find a blacksmith stat. I wish there was a map. Uh, oh. I'm blind. Hello. Welcome. I want to forge a weapon. Sura. Oh, wow, yeah, that's a decent upgrade. Yeah, why not? I'll forge a Sura. Please use it with care. Do you want to level up this weapon? Yeah, sure. I probably Leave have a couple. I do, I have a couple. Uh, let's raise the level to... Nah, actually, it's not. Let me... Is there any... I only got Vitality. Nah. Which weapon shall I strength? Take care. Now, let's see. What sigil do I want on you? Oh, God. You can have three sigils. <sighs> Immediately attack power. Um, I want to put low profile on him. Be mm. No, not fast learner. I do not want a fast learner. Uh, crabby resonance, no. Okay. Crit. And. Damn enough. Oh yeah, I don't even know anything about your masteries. I have 488 points. Oh boy. And let's see your collection. When you get to be my age, you appreciate a quality weapon. All right, let's see. What did I get with you? Sky Shatter. Unleash a shockwave that travels in a straight line. Sky Shatter scale and damage are based on. Oh, there's a lot of real good things. I'm gonna have to check them all out. Grants damage cut to... Okay. I'll do that in my own time. But I guess right now, we have story with this guy. Wasn't expecting a new party member today. Hello. Oh, yeah. Let me see. I'm gonna have... Alright. At least episode four. So let's start listening to his story. Once upon a time, in a land far away, there was a lone swordsman famed for his two-sword style. He became a legend after fighting over 10,000 battles, and the mere sound of his name struck fear into the hearts of his enemies. 
Whenever he appeared in town, ne'er-do-wells were said to scramble away like spiders, fleeing the light. Prospective fighters began to seek out the swordsman, and thus he gained quite the following of disciples. Amongst them, some were so strong they could crush warships with a single strike. One could do worse when choosing students of the martial arts. So the master abandoned the battlefield for the mountains, where he could train his beloved disciples in peace. There was one disciple who quickly stood leagues above the rest. It took her only a matter of days to master the most complicated techniques. She grew at an astonishing rate into one of the most powerful fighters the master had ever seen. But more impressive than her wits or her aptitude was the strength of her conviction. Every day the top disciple begged for harder training, and the master was willing to reward her passion with the very depths of his knowledge. And that's why... Why? Oh, skies help me. That's why when the master found out his top disciple had betrayed him, he was filled with anguish. She went rogue, forcing some of the other disciples to do her bidding. Eventually, the master caught up with her, and they fought a deadly battle. When the dust settled, the top disciple's sword arm hung limp and unusable. It was a bittersweet victory, as the master knew what must come next. He readied his blade, preparing to release her to the afterlife. But he couldn't force himself to make the cut. Not after all he had poured into this girl. Not after failing her so. Thus, he laid down his weapon and promised to live his remaining days in penance and regret. Oh, how our good intentions cloud even the most prescient vision. Having thrown away his name, his blade, and his path, he set out back into the world, but this time, swearing no one would suffer from his tutelage again. Time passed, and the swordsman found himself atop a different mountain, where he learned he had a knack fishing. Suited him just fine. Bass for breakfast, salmon for supper, and naps in between. Yep, it suited him just fine. It was the quiet, healing life of a hermit. Sometimes, when he needed supplies, he would go down to the village and train the locals in a little sword work. That made his coin purse jingle again. But this piece wasn't to last for the swordsman. He discovered his top disciple was back to her wicked ways, and, sword in hand, he vowed to conclude her story for good. This was his true purpose for traveling with the crew, though the young captain never suspected the little Harvin fisherman was harboring such a dark secret. Interesting. By my hand. By my own hand. The former disciple's latest victim had been a simple man from a remote mountain area, cut down, somehow, without the use of her sword. A real shame that one more innocent life lost before its time. The swordsman asked the crew to make haste to the village. When he saw the murdered man's corpse, such was the carnage that he could barely keep from averting his eyes. It was his weakness, his cowardice, that cost this poor man's life. But this time, instead of wallowing in pity, he would don his white uniform of old and atone. He called it his burial garb, and it represented his fearlessness on the battlefield. If he were dressed to meet death face to face, 
What more could his foes do to intimidate him? Of course, his crewmates tried to reason with him, concerned he might throw his life away to make up for the wrongdoing of another. But the Swordmaster was determined. He had vowed to stop his former disciple, whatever risk that entailed. So, when finally the moment of reckoning had come, the Master gripped his blade, ready to strike down his favored pupil. Before he could do the deed, however, his resolve crumbled. His emotions were too strong, dulling his senses and causing him to lose the match. The Master's former youngest disciple, with his two newest pupils watching from the sidelines, rushed to aid him. Ironically, it was the youngest disciple who struck down the fiend in place of the Master. The swordsman was lost in grief. But his newfound champion told him this was for the best. After all, such an old life deserved the rest of its days to be spent in peace. After joining up with the crew, I've had some helter-skelter days, let me tell you. So when we arrived in Zegar Grande, I knew I needed to get myself some fishing done. <laughs> Reset the old noggin. Found a nice quiet pond and dropped my line. Bless me taters. Must have been hours past with no bite. Finally, I decided to pull up my rod and check if the bait was still hardy. But there weren't no baits, no hook, and no fish. Only a lonely little bobber remained on the line. Right, well, what about me traps? I was halfway through the search when I realized, blast, I left them in the lodge. What a day, what a day. But it was too late in the noon to go back for them, and I had other business to attend to, like getting back to the pond and staring out at the clear water. In that moment of stillness, the fishies swam out of their hiding spots. There were big ones and little ones, and the whole school of them reminded me of my teaching days. Each of my disciples was unique in their own right. Had me some slow learners and some fast ones, some goody two-shoes and some real punks. I learned me some good lessons from those kids. My top student, Grace, never wavered in her particular sense of justice. And her commitment to her training was ironclad. What a waste. Range, my youngest pupil, lost his way for decades after leaving my tutelage. But he ended up killing Grace in my stead. He was selfless, thinking only of his master. They say the master extracts potential from the student. But I fear I've ruined more young lives than I've helped. Makes a fisherman wonder how they all would have turned out had he just kept well enough to himself. I turn Grace into a monster. Not a day goes by I don't regret honing her skills. Unfortunately, she had the gift and the gumption to go far, and I exhausted all my knowledge on her. If only I had focused more on the why of my teachings rather than the what. Huh? I swore I felt a nibble at my rod, but when I pulled it up, there was nothing to be found. That's when I remembered I still hadn't hooked or baited the line. That was odd. I was getting antsy. Maybe it was because I forgot the traps, but I couldn't relax just sitting there anymore. I decided to pack up and head back into town. You see, the mind is like a creek. You want to keep it healthy. You gotta keep the waters from stagnating. But churn them too much, and you risk losing all your fish. I decided to head to Sierra's shack and replace some fishing gear, hopefully restoring my brain pond in the process. But just as I was dipping my toes into the placid waters of the lures and baits, I heard a rustle from behind. And to my surprise, they were my crewmates, picking up a package. Said they were bored at the inn, and asked if they could come fishing with me. Youngsters so bored they wanted to go fishing? <laughs> First time for everything, huh? 
While I was hammering out the finer points of fly casting with the captain, Sierra Carte piped up, said she'd come across a pretty tasty rumor. Yep, apparently there's a legendary fisherman in the Skydom that people have started calling the Fisher God. I'd heard rumors like this one before, and they always stank like fish guts. Catching ten fish with one cast, netting a whole consortium of crabs, by yourself? Yeah. If I had a fin for every story like this, I'd be a pretty scary sea monster by now. Then again, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't intrigued. There's a scale of truth to every story. So there must be a reason they call this person the Fisher God. Guess you might say my interest was piqued. Cause if this fellow were half as good as me, he'd make a mighty fine rival. And maybe that's just what I needed. Hmm. And that's as much as I can do for your story. Okay. Now let's actually do story story. Huzzah! Man, this guy runs fast. With his little, little legs. Oh, I knew I saw something. One second. Illyria's journal, archive, documents. Do, 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 do. White paper on public transport. Terminal 1, port. Oh, wait. Is this really anything important? Remarks, we're lucky Seed Hollow's tourism is increasing year over year. All three main terminals listed above have exceeded their operational forecasts. Consider fast-tracking plans to, for port expansion as well as vessel purchases. Yeah, I'm ignoring the top because I don't think that's really that important. Now, is that tourism increasing or is that... The the market looks so oh. good. Too bad nope, I've already heard that. We're leaving. Day. Yeah. Who knows when we'll find the time to... Oh, wait, actually, give life. me a second. Yep, yep, I know how the docks work. Go to Fulka. I have a quest to turn at Fulka. Oh, wow, there's more quests to accept here, too. There you are. You're what I want. Have some charred larmer. Lumber. Oh, God, I said larmer. Can we ignore that? I never said larmer. I said lumber. Me. I still have yet to go with Golem Finger. Any frosted flowers? I want to extract their resonance for an experimental potion. Like the fable which is brewed that instantly cured amnesia. Okay. Yeah. Level up. Alright, and what do you want up here? Oh, you're looking at a training dummy about the snow pillow oh i have quite a few it's just a rock but they say a pilgrim went to sleep with his head on it never woke up weird enough now it's a good luck charm for sleep okay here you go you can have two of the three of them okay then you want you sleep on them okay I guess that's why they're called. Oh, that would probably explain why they're called snow pillows. The adventurer laid his head down on it and never woke back up. But then, oddly enough, like they said, it's now a good luck charm. Okay. Right, we can go back to Seed Hollow. Resume main story. I just want to turn that quest and turn in those two quests. Yeah, <laughs> great. The fruit in the market looks so good. No. Too bad it'll have to wait for another day. Yeah. Who knows when we'll find the time to kick back and relax. I'm sure Lyria will fall in love with this beautiful city. It's going to be great showing her around. I don't got all day. Are we doing this or not? Pleasure working with you. Pleasure working with you. Oh wait, why am I reading? Uh, he says it. Neither of us wants a fine business opportunity to slip through our fingers. <laughs> um, hey, this is out of the blue, but I might have some personal things to tend to. Oh, say what? 
You're gonna break on us? While you check the ruins, I'll look for the red ship. It'll be more efficient. I appreciate the thought, but should you go after them alone? There's no need to worry about me. I promise. I always finish what I start. <sighs> Thank you, Roland. We owe you so much. Take care of them, Zafba. Are you telling me how to do my job? Who's wearing the informant pants here? Oh, <laughs> you, you got me there. What was I thinking? Oh, but at least take this. Well, well. A transceiver. I made it with my own two hands. I'd like it back when this is over. <laughs> Better hope it doesn't fall apart on me then. Now, as a small bonus, our family's pride and joy will fly you to Dolly in style. Be careful out there, everyone. Roland, what are you telling us? Why do you not want to go? Hmm. I'm saying this little detour must not take us too long. Don't mind if I do. All right, Outlaws Monthly. Apparent. Uh, Outlaws Monthly. Really? Uh, apparently, there's a paper for it. Am I missing a couple of papers? Well, I can go to sleep over. Outlaws Monthly. Who dropped this magazine? Pages. The article titled Seven Tips for Becoming a Badass Leader is covered in someone's notes. One, help yourself by helping others. Two, actions speak louder than words. Three, be confident. Four, find strengths instead of focusing on weaknesses. Five, success starts from the top. Six, silence is golden. Seven, love your family. Opsa, I got a feeling you are a man with a heart of gold. A slight change, a change of plans, but no change to our final goal. Sweet. Our course is set. <laughs> this babe's equipped with ether cans too. Do they come stand with every Zang Zangagranda ship? Maybe. Uh. All right. Art. Yes. So, before you ask, this ride's free. Make it worth my while, Skyfarers. Dolly Island. That's where we're going to find the Catalyst Stone to free Lyria from Maybe. the mines. Maybe. I have doubts right now. This is our last thread of hope, and nothing's going to make us let go. Not even a waking nightmare. I have worries because Roland does not like this place. I think... Hmm, what is wrong with the Dolly Island? What? Uh. Oh. Wait, who are you? Shh. It's okay. Lilith. Come. The stars await. And we mustn't keep them. Do you feel all right? Yeah. And how are you feeling? I feel fine. Why ask me such a question? I... <gasps> I found it. Another god. So, looks like he was found by As her at young age. As we fly closer to the main island, an ocean of sand seems to stretch on forever. Large ruins break the surface like icebergs. It's time to start digging through the past. As in one of those tombs lies the catalyst to our future. 
This sandbox is a bit big for one lonely crew to rummage through, don't you think? Ah, uh, well, anything for Lyria. So, yeah, it seems like she found that guy who keeps kicking our butts every time at a very young age, so she probably brainwashed him. And then Larry, of course, is dead-eyed and is being used as basically a compass to the gods. What do we have here? All right, let's see what I can do with you. Or I can call it here. It's been an hour and a half. The next one would be f desert. Scoot like a red like a book. Play like a fiddle. Oh, so the counter you hold down Y. Red like a book. Scoot like a fish. Play like a fiddle. Yeah. Ho, ho. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Probably gonna be a very unpopular thing to do because not much has happened. What do you have for sigils? Not much. Um, I'll take a couple of those. I'll take two. I'll take a few bizarre wings. I'll take I. Griffin fed no uh, a few of these. All right, I'm happy. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it here because I want to try and do the desert in one go, and I know a lot of this was nothing, but there was a lot of story for each of the characters. Their episodes were done, and now I have a new hero, which I am very curious in trying. Red like a book. And basically attack, 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 and use that lunge like a as a counter when they attack. I'll have to try it. But yeah, I'm gonna call it here. I know not much has happened. I know. And this is the second time I said it. Third, actually. But next time will be all this desert area, and I'll see why Roland doesn't want to be here so bad, because he even... Hmm. You, you, he clearly does not want this place or want the seal here to be unlocked but yeah you know what until next time i'll see ya and goodbye <laughs>